Welcome to the next in our series of recording your trio tracks into a digital audio workstation or DAW. And in this episode, I'm going to show you how to record the bass part into a DAW and then how to line it up with the drums. But before we get started, take a second and click on that subscribe button down there. Take a second and subscribe. It's all free information, guys. Crush the subscribe button. Crush the like button. Let me know you like this video. Use the comments section and let's get to it. Okay, you can see we're picking up right where we left off, except I am not using the drums. I went back and re-recorded them actually as stereo, but I don't need them for this part of the demo, so I'm just going to mute them. I'm going to double click in the track list here, and that will be my bass track. Uh, I'm also going to go ahead and expand that out a bit, and let me double click in this area of the track and name it bass. Okay. We are good to go there. Now, if we look at the setup here, you can see that I've turned the mixer all the way down uh, as far as the drums go. So the looper and the drums are nowhere to be found as far as the mix goes, but we've got the bass turned up nice and loud. And then I'm using a single output because we're recording a mono track here, single output from the mixer to the first input of the audio interface. And so if I start pressing the play button, it's a good solid sound. And if we want to see what that looks like, I'll go ahead and arm the track. Okay, so it's a good solid signal, but we're getting that slap back again. So that means we just need to turn off the record monitoring. Okay, it's distorting just a tad, so I'm going to turn the uh, I'm going to turn the bass down just a little bit there, just to adjust it. Remember, we can always get louder, but you can't take something that's distorted and bring it back. It'll just sound terrible. But essentially, at this point. That's all we need to do. So now what I can do is I can go ahead and record that track in. Okay, we're ready to start recording, but here's a little trick. So remember how we talked about recording that one measure count in? Well, obviously, if the drums are turned all the way down like they were here, then obviously when you play it back, you're not going to hear that uh, count in. So if we want to get that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it up here, and then right before the drums start, I'm going to turn it down really quick. So what's going to happen is the WAV file that we're going to record is still going to have that one measure count in, but I'm going to make sure that the drums are not playing back on that track. I just want to record bass. So to get ourselves ready, make sure you press and hold that first part so that it start so it's ready to give you that one measure count in and then let's go ahead and hit record okay so now we're recording and I'm gonna hit the play button and as soon as I can I'm going to turn that drum part down so here we go And once you get done recording, you should have something that looks like this. Okay, now comes the task of lining these tracks up. But because we recorded that one measure count in, it's going to make this whole process a whole lot easier. Okay, so we're going to start by using our cursor here on track two. Hit that S key to split the file apart. Let's select that part that we don't need and get rid of that empty space. Next thing I'm going to do is drag that sucker over and try to start lining it up. Now I'm going to zoom in real close here and you can see that we are nowhere near even for jazz that's nowhere that's nowhere close to jazz. So what we need to do here is turn off that snap to grid function again and I need to take that cursor and get it as close to the WAV file as possible. Let's also bring it closer and let's just zoom in there and we want to try to get this as close to the beginning of the WAV file as possible as we did before. Now let's really get in there and get granular. Okay, well I can see right there that we are close. That's about it right there. That's about it. So we'll go ahead and clip that right in. And that, let's see, uh, right about there, I think, should do it. In fact, actually, what I can do to make it even more precise, I can just get them to start looking kind of like each other there, uh, although the amplitude's a little more increased with the bass track. So just bring it in just a tad. Okay, so we're pretty close at that point. 
Uh, and what I can do is turn that snap to grid back on and just go over there and then snap it right in. So if I zoom back out now, that's pretty right on the money. Um, so let's put this to the test. Let's go ahead and play it back and let's hear what it sounds like. Sounds pretty decent to me. Uh, and uh, that's pretty much how you record the second track in. Now we're going to go ahead and record the third track in, which is the looper, but we're going to do that in the next video. Well, that concludes this episode. Stay tuned for the next one in this series where I show you how to record the looper into your DAW and then line it up with the other two tracks. Well, thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any further questions, be sure to visit us at thepedalguide.com. But in the meantime, follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and also be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for weekly videos and tutorials. Thanks for stopping by here at thepedalguide.com, where I love pedals and so do you.